Hello everyone and welcome back to uh, Uxo and Panzer, Operation Star. So last time we played the night uh, battles inside this game and obviously those are quite dark and hard to see. So um, this mission will be at the uh, at the start of dawn really, so um, that'll be nice. You can see here that I kind of already moved my troops. Um, that's just simply done because I thought I recorded it but it turns out it didn't. So we moved across the river into... Um, oh well, the river coast, right? And now we're going to be attacking these two locations. I'm going to start off with this one. Actually, no, I'll start off with this one this time. So I will see you guys in a little bit when we start the actual battle. Alright, now that we're into the game, you'll see that it's, uh, well, it's kind of nice. It's nice for Russia. We'll just put it like that. Um, so. We, were f we are fighting two battles, one inside this region obviously, and one a little bit north. So uh, we still have to take over the river crossing. I remember doing it last episode, uh, but for some reason, whatever reason it may be, uh, it didn't actually save. Um, that's one of the problems I was talking about. Sometimes when you like destroy enemies, uh, they aren't necessarily completely destroyed, and they they get like some sort of magical, you know, freebie card where they just kind of uh, disappear along the map, right? I think what happens is that like one platoon where one uh, squad survives, and then it counts as like the whole thing surviving, something like that. So uh, the point is, we we're kind of stuck here unless we uh, take the bridge crossing, which is fairly important. Now we have one infantry squad here with a intact heavy weapon what is this exactly it's a stug we have a stug that is intact on this on this side of the river but it's actually out of ammunition you can kind of see the statistic here zero ammo 33 or 83 percent fuel so that's pretty good and it's certainly not fatigued uh let's check our infantry our infantry are a little bit tired but um apart from that our troops are fine there Alright, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to advance to the river crossing with my pioneers, uh, try to attract the enemy's fire, and then advance um, with my troops that are already on that side of the river. It's a little darker than we expect, and it's actually a little more um, dusty than I expected. But alright, it's still, it's still fairly seeable, which is the main thing, so I want to... Um, I want these vehicles to advance, not so much as to uh, actually stall up, I just want them to get up there and protect that river crossing. Those will be my initial orders, let's speed this up. Yeah, you can see that uh, this time it's actually going up to uh, x2.5, but it's supposed to be at x um, six times the regular speed. So that'll just get our motor transports going. And the bulk of my forces are here, they're gonna advance as quickly as possible. Um, we just want to get across that river and really move as far as possible, right? And I think some of our infantry are uh, dismounted, some of them are not. Yeah, it says here this is supposed to be an 8-man squad, but I only see the gunner. Yep. At river crossing operations are one of the harder things to do simply because there's just so many things that can go wrong with them and with that being said we need to be uh, really cautious in our advances here so we're gonna push up like that haven't made any contact but we've established um, a little bit of a river crossing with that being kept in mind we're just gonna continue pushing forward like this I'm not sure what these area markers are but I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be for artillery. Oh, never mind. Looks like we have sighted the enemy. I checked the YouTube quality and it doesn't look like the enemy uh, markers are super visible is what I'd say, which is, which might be a little bit of a problem. I mean, I'm gonna try to see if there is anything here that I can use to display the enemy a little bit better. Um, but if I can, if I just zoom up really close, I'm pretty sure you guys can see the people, right? Yeah, there's one Russian guy taking a look at our uh, our column here. Like, I don't even get how people can see that from so far away. Personally, then again, I'm like pretty much blind, so. <laughs> 
Yeah, he's gonna open fire. I'm pretty sure there's a platoon of people with um, anti-tank rifles here. That might be a little bit of a problem because anti-tank rifles are fairly dangerous. Yeah, but they're in close range. Quite a lot of MG fire, don't you think, for uh, for a couple of men? It's okay though. We should be able to sweep through those people fairly easily. I really want to get this convoy moving though. So we spotted the enemy here. We managed to pin them down. Uh, let's get these troops to move forward. So I want two squads to be hunting up forward. Two in the back. And a one in reserve is what I think I'll do. I'll keep the uh, stug close by. That stug can't be uh, penetrated by anti-tank rifles. I think the only thing that can be actually penetrated by anti-tank rifles are the half tracks, and even that is a little bit of a stretch. Um, but oh, is that a flare going up? Yeah, what is that? I uh, guess it is a flare, but. With that being said, I mean, uh, I want to keep my keep tra I want to keep my uh, half tracks alive as long as possible. Yeah, you can see that the troops just kind of disappear sometimes. And how's the river crossing going? We are oh, the river is frozen. Well, at least we're making progress. Can't be hasty in a, in a river crossing, so we're just gonna wait for a little bit. Now I believe the AI automatically sort yep, turns around and starts firing, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. That's good. It's always good when the AI does its job. Inside this game, I don't think you need to micromanage your units all that much. Uh, but nevertheless, I, I bet it helps. Let's get some more troops in, get the commander poised to uh, move in last. Fast move there, it's okay. I think um, I think if you order your troops to use fast move, they um, they have this like tack for staying on the roads, which isn't necessarily good, but it's not necessarily bad at the same time. Prisoners taken. Ooh, taken some prisoners. Are these the prisoners? Yeah, that's good. So I was um, I was actually notified by uh, one of the people who watched these uh, videos that there's actually a uh, another version of this game out. Like there was a patch, a pretty comprehensive patch actually, that was put out that um, does quite a lot of good things. It simulates like wire uh, communications and stuff and such like that. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna get that just yet. Is that the Russian prisoner guy? Oh no, that's one of our troops. Yeah, the prisoners were just here, and then now they disappeared. Oh well. Um, so as I was saying, there's a more extensive or comprehensive uh, version of this game out um, at the moment, but we're not going to take a look at that simply because it's. I I found out that like the the save games they don't necessarily switch very well. Uh, between the different versions, so uh, we might run into some problems if we do that. Yeah, it looks like our infantry here is also trying is also uh, running out of ammunition as well. They're down to like, oh my god, one clip. No, actually, they have 16 clips of Mauser ammunition, but they only have one clip for their MG. That's going to be a lot of. Uh, that's going to be a problem. These uh these German troops really depend on their machine guns, so. We have one setup, one bridge guard uh, that is going to just kind of monitor that place. We're going to get one place or one squad to come up here and explore the forest. Now, um, here, this is the stamina um, value. I'm not sure if you guys can see this very clear. Oh, hey, another flare. Yes, that is a flare, right? Yeah, it is a flare. Um, I'm not sure if you can you can see this perfectly with YouTube quality and all. Um, that being that being said, and the fact that Fraps or Sony Vegas really doesn't like this game, uh, these troops are fairly tired. I mean, we have one squad that's sitting at 13 uh, stamina, one that's sitting at 66. Well, we have two good squads, actually. 
you know, two good squads, including the command squad, with 75 more at war, 75 stamina. So I'm probably going to let them rest up by a little bit. Uh, with that being said, let's get our troops to march into this area right here. We'll get them to secure our flank, I guess. Keep him there, keep the stug out. Um, we're just going to keep the stug there. I don't think the Russians actually have comprehensive... I don't think air support is actually a big thing in this game. I mean, there is air support, it's just that it's not really that big of a deal, right? So, um, let's see. Just going to send our units in single um, file thing line. We're going to send them over there just so that we can scout out this area. Ten minutes into the game, not bad. Um, I'm just going to let that progress off the map. So we have a ton of troops here. We can exploit our successes inside this area. Um, we could, in theory, try to take crossroads with a small force over here. Or we could move through this area. I know that there's supposed to be Russian tank reinforcements coming from the eastern side of the map, so probably where Amber 3 is. Now, like I said before, tanks don't perform very well inside this game, uh, inside forest. Let's see what's going on here. It slows down automatically to um, one time speed, so that's rather nice. Where did we make contact? Somewhere over there. Now, crossroads here is the major objective. We already captured the river crossing, but I kind of want to expand the uh, river crossing by a little bit. I suppose what I'll do, I'll grab these troops, might as well make a decision right now. I think I'll get them to march right over here. In the meantime, the troops of this platoon will recon, uh, recon the area. So we're going to set a few goals for them, like this. Yeah, just get a large area. I just want to capture this uh, piece of land here. I want it to turn red. I don't want the river crossing thing to happen again where it was initially red. Uh, where we initially went past it, but it turned into enemy held territory anyways. So that's what I'm planning to do there. I'm gonna get these troops over here to march across the river. I'm gonna leave one platoon here to ultimately just protect the river crossing because that's uh, one of the things that I just want to do, right? Actually, scratch that. I think we can get this platoon to come over here. Can we use these bridges? Yeah, this. This red line is the um, line of the map, so it looks like there's a little crossing here that we can use as well. So I'm actually just going to get our troops to march over there. Did they make any contact? Oh, they killed that one guy. Um, for those who can't tell, there is that lonely Russian's body. He is dead. Alright, so that's going to be that. We don't necessarily need to uh, be doing anything for the next little bit, so I'm going to speed the game up. I can normally get this up to um, six times the speed when I'm when I'm uh, using the 3D thing, but I guess Fraps is really uh, CPU intensive, so it looks like uh, we can't do that. It's that, where some, it's that where I have something that's running in the background. See how it fluctuates between um, going from 2.5 times regular speed to 4 point something, and it goes back and forth? Or maybe it's just the fact that the river crossing requires a lot of uh, CPU power. I'm gonna zoom on to one of these vehicles. I think we can, yeah, there's a camera mode. Isn't this neat? Ooh, pretty. 
You know what, I'm actually gonna check the distances between each of these vehicles. Apparently, I believe for tanks, tanks are supposed to stay uh, 50 meters um, between each other during these like marches and just in general maintain 50 meters. Well, the half trucks do quite a reasonable job of it. I mean, they're yeah, they're almost at 50 meters, 45 from the uh, the end of the vehicle to the start of this other one. So that's not that bad. Yeah, and they're just gonna be going their way. Let's get this vehicle to set up a. Uh, tank defense on this side of the river and we're gonna put it right here now let's actually set that up right here next to all of these trees so then we can kinda get a we can use the terrain as cover should we ever need to I wanna make sure I have at least one of these crossings available at, uh, at all times Oh, that one platoon over here went really far from its objective And we need to continue uh, having reconnaissance in uh, this area. I don't want to get stalled up on uh, another bridge uh, bridgehead over here, right? So we need to keep at that over here. Our troops are deploying, which is nice. And I think I'm going to get this uh, troops' as men. I'm going to do this. Select only the infantry. And I want them to recon the crossroads. So that'll be rather uh, interesting to see how that will play out. Now I think Seds will um, Seds will send his men forward like this. Now in like uh, now in real life, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to hear the um, half tracks way before they ever uh, actually get to you. But inside the game, I think we can still maintain. Uh, secrecy by advancing these infantry up. Is this a stug? Yes, it is a stug. Perfect. Oh, enemy contact. Where? Some troops near here. What is this uh, platoon doing or squad doing? They have decent amounts of ammunition. They actually have grenades as well. But they're a little tired. That's fine. How are our engineers doing? A little tired, but they should be fine. Yeah, we're just going to keep these uh, people over here uh, where they are. Let them sit tight for a little bit. I'm pretty sure one on one, um, one squad against one squad, we won't have any like major problems in taking the uh, Russian forces on. It's only when they are massed when uh, we run into problems. What is this column doing? They are advancing very nicely with a gun half track in the front. That'll be very helpful. Um, if we meet the enemy forwards, but it also exposes our weapon support uh, to the enemy a little prematurely. The goal with uh, the whole idea with the uh, whole squad support weapons is that infantry should be doing most of the dirty work, and the heavier stuff like mortars and machine guns should stay relatively back, but not at the very back of the column. And the reason for doing that is that you you want to engage the enemy with uh, an advanced force, deploy all of your main troops, and then get the heavy machine guns and all that stuff moved up at the same time as you uh, deploy your main line, or actually a little bit behind that time is also uh, perfectly acceptable. Yeah, how are our troops doing here? They still have nine men, and the Russians uh, are losing you. Yeah, I don't get how these troops can ever see anything. There's supposed to be like one guy over there, and somebody can apparently see. Oh, no, there's two people over there. Yeah, two Russian guys. 
I wonder if these people over here have uh, machine guns. Yeah, they, they should have. Yeah, they have quite a lot of machine gun ammunition, actually. They just don't seem to be using it. Key point is taken. Key point is taken. Key point is taken. Alright, so those troops should be all... Uh, yeah, they should all be assembling over here at crossroads. That is good. Have one squad over here. Move the stug up a little bit. That tra half track uh, column should be moving up any second now. That is good. I'll just watch this fight in um in fast forward mode just to kind of uh, see how it plays out. Looks like that guy over here has a uh, semi-automatic rifle. Yeah. He has like a ATV or S SVT or something like that. The, the Russians made like a 10 magazine um, really fat like battle rifle pretty much and they also made a uh, semi-automatic rifle out of it. I don't know what, uh, what they're called though. I think it's the SVT and I think it's in uh, Red Orchestra too. Oh. What happened to that Russian guy? Where is he? Where did he go? Somewhere around here. Yeah, I don't know why my camera angle uh, got all twisted and now they're gone. Sure, they're over here somewhere, so we're gonna recon that area. Uh, they are recon, they'll also recon. Let's close up on the Russians. These troops over here should really be advancing. They should be marching like that. Starting to get uh, get hot over here. Yeah, it looks like we had located a little Russian encampment over here. I hope two squads will be enough to uh, push them back. Yeah, we're starting to run out of ammunition to contain these Russians. Yeah, it's not going to be a good idea to charge them. But then again, at the same time, we can't really disengage right now. Oh crap, I just realized the, um, the command squad is actually only three people, so that's going to be a little problematic, right? Uh, let's get the motor troops to get over there as soon as possible. Do we have any more troops that can get there as soon as possible? These troops are fairly tired, they only have 12 stamina. These troops are not so tired, but they're a little too far away. How's the bridgehead coming along? It is expanding very, very slowly. Ooh, they are fairly close to the enemy here. Yeah, there's a. Oh my god, did that guy just throw a Molotov on? He did! He did throw a Molotov onto the guy. What? That's so weird! Run! 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 Oh. That's only a flesh wound. He'll be fine. He'll be back in action so long as he doesn't roast.
Apparently, uh, hand-to-hand -hand combat is also simulated in this. I don't know why those two didn't brawl it out. That would have been funny to watch. And they're gonna have a sitting war. We're gonna have to wait until the half-track gets there before anything, uh, real happens. In the meantime, more troop movements. Hooray! Oh, there's a bridge here too. That's going to be very helpful. But this is the edge of the map, actually. I can't move my camera uh, any farther than this. Unless I... Uh, can I do this? Yeah. So they crossed on the main bridge and they have their entire army. Uh, well, we have our entire platoon here. That's going to be very helpful. Now in the meantime, let's see what's going on back here. Yeah, now we can really bring some of the uh, the heavy firepower onto these Russians, now that we have the half-track and the machine guns over here. I was wondering from uh, from last night's battle, I was wondering where the heck all of these uh, flaming troops were coming from. I thought they were just kind of uh, flamethrower men, seeing as how we do have a lot of uh, Panzer pioneers, right? But I guess it's because of the Molotovs that the Russians are throwing onto our guys is uh, why they keep setting on fire. Yeah, that half track really mops up these guys really well. So that's probably, that, yeah, that's gonna clean them up. I mean, we already have crossroads and it looks like we already have this area. So I'm just gonna call on that ceasefire. We've already taken quite a lot of land, and the Russians have lost quite a lot of people, right? So that's kind of that battle. Um, this is gonna go back to that campaign map, so I'm gonna have to end the video as soon as we get that uh, statistics sheet. Let's see, forces after battle, 98%, casualties, 3 casualties, 2 killed, 6 wounded. They lost, they have 15%. Alright, back to the campaign map.